Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Captain Shack here, and welcome to Star Citizen Citizen Con Demo. I'm joined with Wasted Space. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing very well, thank you, sir. What about yourself? I'm doing pretty good. Just looking at a beautiful planet in what's supposed to be a live demo. Now, me and you, we watched this while we were chatting over on Discord. Uh, but we're going to be talking about some of the things that are coming out for Star Citizen while discussing what I think during this demo... You you said that maybe this wasn't quite uh, quite what on the on the bar for real reals on, on the bar I I'm not sure what you mean by that honestly I, I'm not sure I would go so far as not quite on the bar but I was just saying that you're I like not... we were like that poppin where's that poppin <laughs> I yeah, remember it, it it it's tricky to say I mean oh. I noticed that they very importantly and very noticeably kept that FPS number in the top right hand corner. Mm -hmm. while all of this was going on as well. So you're like, not only where's the pop-in, but with that, just reminding you, by the way, guys, and this is running at over 100 FPS, there's, there is a bit there with the trees. A bit with the trees. Like, that's damn. what we started talking about. It's like, okay, there is some pop-in because you see it with the trees, but damn, look how smooth it is. Is there? This is supposed to be, like, in-engine, in-game right now, right? They're running through uh, probably some scripted camera angles is what I was thinking. But like you were saying, it's just too smooth, right? You should see some some fade in that LOD, which mm -hmm. is like, is is the tech really that smooth? Because there's other than the trees, which were obvious, you know, LOD models popping into into the higher higher uh, quality ones. But oh man, like yeah, I, I wasn't convinced that this was actually like straight game 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 engine like uh, like I, I guy behind been, in on the yeah. set like playing it right then and there i when i wasn't sure either because he's like yeah we're gonna be showing a live demo it's like is this like in the engine but everything is scripted in some way or is some guy actually going to be taking the controller and playing mm -hmm. some today like we got with the because the gamescom demo was like we talked about that one mind-blowing in what they were able to do in gamescom like we were really impressed they yeah, were sitting there with xbox controllers yeah that playing it right amazing. there like, wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm a massive fan of being up in the mountains. I just want to be there now. That looks pretty. <laughs> the little dude on the top is supposed to mm -hmm. say, Hello, Gabe's. Or uh, not Gabe's. So, Citizen Card. But everybody was laughing so hard at just seeing a little dude up there <laughs> that you couldn't hear what he said. Oh, man. So, all right. Let's 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 go ahead and get into what, what came out of um, the big show, right? Because this show went on forever. And outside of them just talking about the structure of the forums for 30 minutes, which I know me and you almost fell asleep in our chairs listening yep. to that slideshow. Oi. Um, some highlights. So they talked about 2.6, which is supposed to come out, I believe, this month. Have you heard anything different to that? Well, I was kind of excited for it. As far as I understood, it was going to come out directly following CitizenCon. You know, they were really kind of pushing this idea that CitizenCon was going to be all about Star Marine. So a little bit right. of me was disappointed at the fact that actually we didn't get very much about Star Marine. But it did sound like at least it's coming soon, and for whatever reason, it's been pushed back a little bit. We did get a bunch of extra information about that, and I guess some of what we see here might be related, because I guess this is also using that updated combat model. Yeah, I mean, we see the updated interaction, which they'll show in a little bit. Like, they just went straight into gameplay. Somebody is actually there on scene playing this live for the audience. Um, so yeah, they show a little bit of like the new interaction stuff, a little bit of the com the, the combat model. I think they've got the new like head bob system in, so it doesn't bob all over the place. Well, and uh, I think they were also showing us a bit of the new camera system there as well, a couple of extra points of view that weren't available previously. Yeah, on my notes, I have in capital letters, camera update, oh yes, YouTubes. <laughs> I was so excited by like, wait a minute, camera update? Now he doesn't go into what he meant by that. I'm hoping we get some type of like spectator or a little bit more control. We do see a little bit in this demo, um, some new camera angles. Oh, Wheel cam. Okay, he's got, here's a cool idea now. He's got atmospheric issues that he's running into. And this is the reason why you can't just fly straight to your mission objective uh, for some of these missions, it looks like. Because I didn't really think about that. If you, you've got these cool buggies, these cool trucks, but if you just fly straight to the objective, What's the point of having the yeah, buggy? Yeah, why, why would you even use them? But I wonder if this is also partly the fact that they've talked about the aerodynamic system and the fact that more aerodynamic ships are going to be much more effective when it comes down to actually operating within an atmosphere. And let's be clear, the Constitution... Constitution? No, Constellation. Completely Constellation, different thing. <laughs> the Carney. Yep. yep, the Carney. But, uh, it, it, that's not an aerodynamic ship. Let's be clear. That, that's clearly not a bird designed for atmospheric flight. So maybe... It's simply that there's only circumstances in which certain circumstances in which it can land. 
I don't know. I mean, it does now say safe landing point found, but it'd be interesting to see yeah. whether maybe one of the more aerodynamic craft, like, say, the Avenger, your big swept wings, would be able to get further into territory than something massive like this. It, it could change how some of the missions are generated for, like, the open universe. We're talking about just straight-up Star Citizen. Like, I like this idea of they can tell a story, they can make you go through what they want to show you, because all these missions are supposed to be still created by artists, right? They're not just randomly generated. So, okay, you're not going to be able to land there, but we have a landing zone for you to land at. Now make your way to the objective with whatever you have on hand. Because that, that's, that's the big excuse there was. We need you to take a truck because there's a story we want to tell here. Uh, there isn't much of a story. A crashed ship is what we're going to see, but... Oh, man, you can understand bird. the mindset behind it, though, uh, and yeah. the need to try and make sure that, where possible... Because it's all well and good doing these completely free-roaming, you-can-approach-a-mission-from-any-angle-you-want kind of games. But in reality, so few of them exist because the guys making them want you to experience a story. And if you experience that story uh, randomly thing, right? you don't idea. get the true sense of it you could come in in just so completely the wrong fashion uh, that it just doesn't work so yeah i suppose it's it's almost one of those necessary semi evils i suppose mm -hmm. you'd like to be able to think that you could do it any way you wanted but if you did how many of those outcomes are going to end up being bad right it, it's all about balance i like that he just went back here he grabbed his armor and his gear He's getting ready to go out on a mission. He got a new character model. It's actually new one HUD of the characters overlay. from Squadron 42. There's the new HUD overlay. Yeah, the new interaction. Um, and he's grabbed himself a sniper rifle. All right, cool. So he's about to run off on his mission and take a vehicle with him. But let's talk a little bit more about the 2.6 update. This is the update we're supposed to get uh, hopefully this month. I mean, that's kind of what we've been talking about for a while now. 3.0 is supposed to come out in December. So any delays in 2.6 is probably going to delay 3.0. I really want to see both these updates out before the year is up. Uh, I know we've talked about doing events with the community about with 3.0, because 3.0 is supposed to be the 64-player cap limit. At least that's the rumor going around. I well, didn't and see anything the full version of, of Stanton. You know, we, yeah. we, get, we get all of that room to play with by that point, and we get to go down on these planets, as I understand it, as well. So that's where, really, the community can start feeling like you have some influence on the world. It's not a 24-player kind of tech demo. It becomes much more than that, especially when you can hopefully go down and start to see things like this. Mm -hmm. that, look at that distance. 2,800 meters away that he's got to travel, and he can actually see, like, the rocks and the outcropping. I mean, that's, ah, uh, the, the things about this engine that they're doing with it are so damn exciting. But So talking about 2.6, um, they're going to come out with Star Marine, which is the first thing I can't wait to do with the community, is get 12v12s going, right? 24 players kicking the ever-living crap so, yeah. out of each other. We There's the, the sweet ride. We've seen of this a few times in some of their production wild, yeah. videos, which... Um, we didn't get to see this much of it, though. No, we really didn't. We saw it in like on somebody's computer as he was designing it and how he could get it to fit in the Connie because the actual landing bay wasn't big enough for this vehicle with a turret. So you're gonna see how they fix that. Check this out. If they I, they show it deployed, they, they really briefly they show it deploy. Yeah, there was also a, a brief bit of this in the 3.0 gameplay footage that we got from. Um Gamescom as Gamescom, well. Yeah. You, you just got a tiny bit of the I cockpit it. and it's unfolding and so on. And I love the fact that they go to the effort of making all those animations for all the bits. I mean, talk about immersion. Oh. Here we go. There it is. That's how they got it to fit. <laughs> and the wheels kind of like retract. The wheels kind of fold into the sides. Yeah, they yeah. lift There's up. There's the and new camera in. angle too. Yep, wheel cam. Wheel That's cam. What we always wanted. I'm down with <laughs> for wheel all those cam. Stars. But then it looks great. I mean, it, it looks great to the point where I. I'm doing that same thing I did in the last video where I'm immediately like, hang on a second, why isn't the terrain deforming correctly under the weight of that vehicle? Why are there not nice tracks? It's because it looks amazing. So, you... <laughs> so you're like oh, starting to time. nitpick the little things. Uh, yeah. You're like, oh, I need I need more of this. I need more of that. It's like, just for one minute, let's sit back and let's just if take a look at what they've managed real. to accomplish. <laughs> oh, if this was, yeah. Right. Those I love the fact... To... Oh, you can see the dust in the background too. Nice little the trail. suspension's behaving a lot better than it did in that first demo with this vehicle too. Like oh, clearly, okay. some iteration has gone on in between then and now. And these planets well, just look just at the planet look itself. Crazy, like compared to the last demo, mm. the work that they've already done to make like this is a really interesting rocky terrain, almost like Tatooine esque. Uh, I just love this interior perspective. It's so much, uh, such a, a great area of view inside this cockpit. Uh, but okay, so we got Star Wars for two point six. Uh, they're going to be adding persistent missiles. I know a lot of people are going to be really happy about that, meaning you launch your missiles. They're going to be launched. You can't just kill yourself and get your missiles back. Which is I'm only semi-happy about doing. that. As an owner of a craft that only has two missiles, uh, 
Yeah, fair they enough. Last it's like, oh, I'm but at the same dying. time, one of the things that they're also doing is adding in um, customization properly for that setup too. So you're going to be able to fiddle with your customizations during being able to dur during Arena Commander, like basically virtual ship customization, mm -hmm. which could be cool because that starts to open up the opportunity of it being a tool to actually test stuff and be like, okay, we're going to dive into Arena Commander for a bit and see what works well with our ships. Yeah, like if talking about customization, since they're doing Star Marine with the 2.6 update, they're actually going to have the customization for your gear for your Star Marine for these matches. They're going to have accolades you can unlock. Uh, they've already showed it a couple of development uh, videos in the background, like how that menu is going to work, you know, picking your shotgun or your sniper rifle or whatever. So there's a lot of focus on easier for players to test these things that they've got, like swapping out weapons like you were saying or missiles or whatever and then the character setup so yeah it's looking good so star marine hopefully before this month is over like i'm hoping we hear about it in the next week really. we're, kind of, we're gonna kind of need to i think if, if if this might be going a bit far but there's a lot of versions in between 2.6 and 3.0 <laughs> and i so badly yeah. want that for december so please this month would be ideal because then you know that they're at least on route for that sort of target Oh, look at this wreckage up here. So he's about a thousand meters from the beacon now, and we've got the wreckage on his port side, the lighting effects off the truck. This reminds like, when I was watching this, I was thinking of all those times back when Mass Effect 1 came out, and I was like, wouldn't it be cool if me landing on this planet was multiplayer? Like, you know, when you're landing and exploring <laughs> yep. the planets and all the wrecks and stuff, it's like, wouldn't it be cool if I could do this with a buddy of mine? We're driving this truck. Hopefully the truck controls better, because good God, Mass Effect 1's controls with that truck. But... Like, um, that, oh, that they're, poor they're colors. your favorite vehicle right there. The that poor colors. <laughs> Torn to pieces. This I found kind of interesting because they talked a bit about how they wanted to reuse assets earlier on in this whole um, presentation and about how they were sort of designing assets to be able to be efficiently reused in like wrecked state, for example. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, fair enough. So you, you can kind of see how they would change the textures and change the lighting and add a few extra sort of bits of debris around and so on, a few sparks. And, and that'd be all that it took. And then they show you this later down. And I'm thinking, that's not just a few extra textures and some sparks. That thing's in four pieces, at least. Now, I wonder, though, because it's in four pieces, you know, the, the ships that they've got in Arena Commander that we've played with, they actually do break apart. Like, they have pieces of them that'll come off. So yeah. is that those pieces broken apart, retextured to show, like, rust and age and, and planted down? Because, like you were saying, we were discussing this before when they were showing um, the interior of damaged capital ships when capital ships have been destroyed, of how, like, changing the lighting and changing some of the effects really make it feel completely different, yet it's very... Um, efficient for the artists to use these already built assets and just kind of fl slap on a new texture to the damaged pieces or change the lighting to make it look different. Like, because they've got so much they have to do to make this game work. Yeah, they anyway. have to generate all this stuff. So yeah, we're, we're getting we're getting so off of the 2.6 subject, but yeah, they're gonna have to know, generate we're, we're, all this stuff to populate this universe. I mean, I just see that stuff and immediately think, cool. Does that mean we're gonna find potentially wrecked craft on the ground? around the place have they got the technology to be able to create these things dynamically in sufficient volumes that not only that creates an interesting gameplay mechanic but every time you go there it looks visually a bit different and a bit unique and you really feel like you're actually exploring a bit too and i you know mm -hmm. i was just getting really excited for some of the ways in which they were keeping it very efficient and making it thus way more plausible for them to be able to pull this off and we had that conversation about like how quickly can they produce this. Here's a nice little cutscene with what we're gonna probably see as the first NPCs, like combat NPCs, where the player's fighting against them properly, sorta. I don't know. I'm not really sure if there's any AI behind these guys or this was just totally scripted. But um They look familiar as well like somehow. The... Yeah. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fine. This is why we can't have nice things. They scare easily, I heard. Ah, but then they come back and in greater numbers. Mm. And it's like firing at his wheel. That likely like, we've got some damage and some barks firing off. And now our little taste of combat. Oh, I guess he was I starting to turn to fire at him. Yep. So he maybe does maybe sort of respond. AI. They're they're certainly not the best AI in the world if if they are AI. But either way, I mean, this again is where I, 
I, we mentioned this, we talked about this during it as well. I have always been a massive fan of the Cry Engine in all of its iterations. And I know at this point, it's almost like Robert Space Industries basically own the Cry Engine. <laughs> but <laughs> Seems like I, I'm, I'm really pleased to finally see this engine start to come to its, like, the thing it did best, which was this sort of level of graphical fidelity. It, the textures, the lighting, they all look great. And then you combine that with the fact that it was always a first-person shooter. So when you get down to this level of combat, the ragdoll looks really good. The the bullet impacts look really good, you know. You can even see there's a oh, little yeah. effect when he's moving around and looking around with a sniper up. You can That scope's still looking at something, even though he's not looking down it. It's just quite distorted and weird. But, yeah, I'm just pleased to see that engine still going and the results it's capable of now producing. I mean, it's really nice that they've got a bunch of the cry engine guys hired onto the yeah. team now working on it. I mean, that's there's the distress beacon that he's been tracking down for, what, 2,000 meters from way back where he parked the Connie. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a simple mission that he's got here. Let's go explore this thing that's down here. You can totally see this, the persistent universe of, like, somebody grabs a mission that's go explore some unknown thing and you end up in a story like this. Um, where it's it's guiding you, or the artist is guiding you through a, a tale of like what happened to this ship, you know what what ship was it, and you can have some audio logs in here. It's it's really exciting to see this. But all right, we talked about two point six, um, the the procedural demo here for Planets version two. Mm -hmm. It just looks gorgeous. Um, but two point six Starbrain, that's the big thing. Oh, the flight model balance is supposed to come out of two point six. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's something I'm really excited for because right now I don't know how you feel about it, but when you play. When you're playing like a dogfight against somebody else, especially doing two fighters, I, I feel like I don't even get a chance to see the ships that I'm dogfighting. Like, the fights go by so fast, and there's so much almost sliding around, and the word is that they're going to be slowing down the combat a bit more and rebalancing how it feels. Because right now it feels like even the large ships are pretty damn fast. How do yeah. you feel about the rebalance idea? I like the sound of that, and what I'd really like is for the ships to also take on, and this might be a little contentious, because some of them definitely do have this already, don't get me wrong, but take on a bit more identity in their flight characteristics. Because, you know, aside from a couple of standouts that are capable of doing stuff that some of the other ships can't, like, you know, some of the Cutlass's reversing abilities, for example, they mm -hmm. do feel quite similar. You know, and, and they're all, as you say, they're all quick, they're all agile. So if there is a defined difference there it's very hard to pick up on because everything's happening really fast and it's just very hard to say oh look that that's a connie it's noticeably slower than than this hornet it just mm -hmm. i don't feel that necessarily unless you're talking about generally when you're co-oping uh, co with people and you're all going in a straight line and then you start going oh yeah my ship is actually quite slow isn't it <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, I'm really looking forward to seeing another rebalance, too. And they've rebalanced the, the ship flight models quite a few times now. But this is the first time I've heard them say, you know, we're going we're gonna to slow stuff down and make the bigger ships feel like big ships, right? We're going to make the freelancer feel like a freelancer. And then the smaller fighters will feel much more like the fighters they're supposed to be if everything else seems to be a little bit more in line. I think everything's a bit too fast as it is right now, especially for new players. I... Everybody looks at this and they go, you know what I want? I want that kind of Star Wars-y feeling of dogfighting and... In, from the movies, right? And in this, you get more mm -hmm. of what seems like a jousting effect. Everything boils down to many a times when you're in any of the fighter craft. And even the Cutlass. Like, when we were fighting, we dogfight a few times in that thing. Uh, yeah. Me against you. And it still kind of turns into that, I'm so fast, I've blown past you with a huge distance between us. We both have turned around, and now, guess what? We're jousting. Yeah, and we're going we're gonna to blow past again. Either that or occasionally in just a circle fight. But, yeah, I mean, in reality, occasionally in a circle fight, but in reality, like the Cutlass, for example, what, one of the things that should be a big deal in that is the fact that you can swing its rear engines around and blast away backwards just as quickly as you can do forward. Your primary do thrust can be movies. your primary brake power. Yeah. Like, you could just flick it forward. Yeah. It's, but and I have to, like, actually choose, you know, I, I'm not wanting to do that because it's effective. I'm choosing to do it because it's something I can do and it would be fun. You know, it's just like, I'm going to do it because I can, rather than I'm going to do it because it's actually something that will help. Which is, yeah. A little yeah, bit more ag information here. Again, yeah, just keen, I, keen to see another rework, and slower, I think, could help. I think so, too. I'd love to see a bigger gap in between the ships like you were talking about. But okay, so there's the ship rebalance. We'll see how it is. That's the whole point of the arena commander, is to test things and to see what's better, what's worse, so they can change it again. That's why it's been rebalanced so many times. And that's such a key part of Star Citizen. It's got to be good. Uh, but that's that's 2.6. 3.0. Oh, look at it. They can, he can mm. see the... 
space station they passed on the way in. From the ground. Yeah, we, we, which, and, and, and as you mentioned when we were first talking about that, that this isn't like Dual Universe or some of the other games where, yeah, it's in space, but actually it's probably only about 15,000 kilometers away. You know, it's quite close in space. It would be crashing to the ground if it wasn't an immobile object. In this right, case, yeah. it was legitimately a very, very long way away. Dual Universe is a great example of that, because that space station, it's up in space, I guess, but when you see him pan back, it is really close to the ground, so you can see it clearly. Um, I don't know, maybe they're working on that, though. So, let's get into, while he's still driving around on the ground vehicles, I really hope they do more ground vehicles. I want to see, like, a wheeled motorcycle-esque variant. I want to see more ground stuff. Uh, but anyhow, let's talk about 3.0, because that's a big deal. And we're talking before the end of the year, that's going to be out. Yeah, well, I mean, as we touched on earlier, whole of the Stanton system. Big deal. We, we finally get, I mean, this sounds bad, this sounds like a big criticism, but we finally get something that's actually worthwhile doing within the game structure, because at the moment, in reality, there's not that much there, space-wise, and what is there is all of the same thing over and over again. Four missions. copy-paste style. <laughs> and then whatever you can get out of playing with other players, yeah. it's, it's mm. There's not a whole lot there right now in Arena Commander, in the, uh, the, the persistent universe demo that they've got running right now. But what they are going to be coming out with, if, just talking about things to do, all the basic professions, right? So we're talking trading, we're talking cargo transport, piracy. Uh, they mentioned mercenary. I, I'm guessing that's just hiring players to help protect your cargo. And then um, bounty hunting is going to be a thing. So those are like the base professions that's going to be coming out 3.0. Which makes sense, and that ties back into their sort of organization system. That we kind of, you kind of could have guessed at those just based on the types of um, organization you could select yourself as being. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's kind of those those primary bits, and I guess from there on, a lot of it's that ephemeral thing, emergent gameplay, and how well can players create their own activities. But <laughs> like just having that much this, more room. Yeah, you know, more room to do things, and all of this ties into that cargo transport, the actual being able to move objects from one point to another is the big system that they'll be implementing in 3.0, and every one of these is reliant on that system being implemented. So how are you going to have trade if you can't move goods? How are you going to do cargo transport, which I, cargo transport's pretty much trade, right? Uh, piracy, how can you be do piracy if you don't have something to pirate? So all of it ties back in. If there's no piracy, there's no mercenaries to protect you from pirates. And then, of course, bounty hunting, which I'm curious, what mechanics are they talking about when they say bounty hunting other than just going after wanted players? Yeah, I mean, is that how much more is that over the system that we currently already have? That, that yeah. is just, I can go after the, the most wanted person right now. So is that bounty hunting? Okay. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, or, or is it more of a system where players can set bounties on other players? And, oh, and the story. bounty hunter gets to choose whether or not they're willing to essentially go pirate in order to fulfill some of those bounties. That could be more interesting. Yeah. Far yeah, more interesting. A bit interesting. like, I mean, I, I know you played the you played UO, like the bounty system in that almost, mm -hmm. where you could literally set custom bounties on people's heads because they'd killed you or whatever. <laughs> Yeah. No. Oh, or maybe maybe they're they're going a little deeper in that. Like maybe yeah, you'll have those custom bounties that you could place on players' heads. Maybe we'll even see some NPC bounties that you can take on a bulletin board. That'd be nice to see like a mission system crank yeah, up. Because if they're in gonna PB do trade, content. yeah, if they're gonna do trade, that means you're gonna have some type of what mission giving system that gives you that cargo to pick up from one point and bring it to another point. Some type of interaction with buying stuff. Maybe that's gonna be tied into it as well. I love this dust storm, by the way. Yeah, it, it's really good. I mean, it, it's, it, this uh, so much of this to me is, just screams out Mad Max, which, uh, which uh, don't get me wrong, I, it's something I absolutely love. I love the vibe. I love the game they made. I love the, you know, <laughs> the movies. So this is all good. Just the idea that you can come down to a planet like this and get that sort of massive ruined ship Mad Max vibe with dust storms coming in in the distance. And oh, God damn, oh. we're getting good at making graphics that look legitimate. When when he's looking at this ship, the first thing I thought was, I really hope he goes up to the bridge, because he looked over it with the scope. Mm -hmm. and like, oh, and you see the little dude up there walking around. It shows you the scale. Once yeah, again, he's, going he's back there to that, for that like, purpose only, <laughs> oh, just to get shot, shot in the balls, which is I'm pretty shot sure in the happens. balls and show you how big the ship is. <laughs> <laughs> You're there for scale. Congratulations, Funk. Told you, right in the balls. Uh, so there. There you go. Uh, that would be 3.0. We're going to get the basic professions. 3.1, it's going to have more of the economy professions. We're talking getting out there to do the mining and do the refining and processing. Refining and processing. 
was something that they mentioned, but they didn't talk about what they meant by it. So, well, we, we have ships to do with that, don't they? Have ships specifically mentioned as mining ships, but also ships that specifically mention processing. So, the bigger, yeah, dedicated mining yeah. ships. They've clearly so, like, got some plans for it. What's the plan there? Like, what's the game mechanic there for processing minerals? Is it just to up the value of the thing you mined? Are we talking about processing for what? Manufacturing? We know there's going to be science and research, but we haven't really talked about player economy in the way of manufacturing. Like, what are you doing with these resources other than making a profit off of them for selling them? So I'd love to hear more about that. Refueling is coming in that update 3.1, as well as they say escort. But I don't have a clue yeah, what, what escort on earth means. does that mean? <laughs> is that escort NPC missions? escort missions where we I hope defend not. a convoy? It's the worst missions in I suppose actually the only the only genre where escort missions are fun. Us. <laughs> Sci-fi space, space, space sims. Yeah. Yep. I was like, you're about to say that and you're probably yeah, thinking and then like I immediately escorting thought, an NPC. Hang on, TIE Fighter. Best, um, one of the best space games ever, and you're like, how much of that was actually escort missions? A huge amount. How much of it was X3, good? X three escort missions. Them. I'd put a, like a, a, an escort ship next to one of the transports and have the turrets just go crazy on people. Those were a lot of fun. So that could be great. That could be great PVE content. And I'm really interested. Small in Assassin's Creed PVE moment content. there. Don't know uh, and we're also talking about landing on planets with all this. So after 3.0, we're going to have planets to land on. How is this going to be affecting us? Oh, look at that storm coming. Landing on planets. Well, and it uh, makes me also wonder. I mean, when they're talking about introducing all of these extra mechanics in, uh, and you know the fact that we've got trading coming in, uh, for example, which, which trading relies on scale for the most part. It relies on moving goods from one place to another, either via a, over a long distance to add to their value, or via a dangerous location to add to their value. So, how much stuff is in Stanton when it's done? Like, how much extra bits are going to be there that they haven't talked about and aren't on the galactic map? Because in reality, they're being randomly generated or generated by missions or generated by players. You know, I'm excited. Yeah, like, okay, so you're talking about new places to explore or having that scale. Well, 3.1 is supposed to be the first iteration of a new solar system that we're going to be exploring. And then 3.2 and 3.3 all are going to have new systems to explore. So, like, that's what they said in their slides. Mm -hmm. It's how big is the universe going to be once we get to, like, 3.3 when they announced farming and everybody, including myself, <laughs> cheered. And I think I heard a little sigh from you. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> Okay. We have since brought me around, to be fair, but only yep. in the context of, well, if they're doing farming, then what else are they going to be doing? And yeah, it, it has its place, don't get me wrong. It's I'm going to call you out sure a little bit. It, when yeah. I brought up farming to you, you said, you know, what, are they going to have space tractors? And I said, this is Star Citizen. Why wouldn't they have space <laughs> tractors? They've already got golf carts. Space tractors aren't that far off. Like, come on. Yeah, I, I, to be fair, I can't argue with that. There is no way out of that one. Yep. And now all the people it, it who are like, why would they want to add that, right? Ta so Tabby loves farming games. Black Desert, if you're talking about, I can't remember that one on Steam that she's got, which is nothing but a farming game. Um, like, there is a huge audience out there for non-combat mechanics in MMOs where they can play with their friends. Star Citizen is going to have these ships that you can have modules to actually add in things like farms. What does it mean for us? How is that gameplay going to work? No idea. But you know what? If they're going to think outside the box and add crap like that in, I am down. I'm down for all the non-combat mechanics. Bring it 100%. on. 100%. And to be fair, that was, the way you sold it on, to me was on that line. It was non-combat mechanics. So, yeah, you might not enjoy farming, but that's just going to be one of them. So what's the spectrum of other stuff you could potentially put in those modules? What is the spectrum of other things that you could be doing? I mean, that discussion even went so far as to get a bit crazy with the place to call your own and player, player housing. housing. And, yeah, we talked yep. about player housing and like I have decorations already in my hangar. I'm a subscriber monthly to to support like the videos they do and stuff and to get access to the cool assets and pictures that they've got. So I get these random doodads that I can decorate my hangar with, and I get to keep those when the game comes out. And where am I going to put those? Are they going to be on my captain's quarters on my personal, you know, ship? Are they going to be on a station that I can call my own? Like, that? those non-combat mechanics and those places to call your own, like you were saying, it's so important to make an immersive game, that place you can go in between those crazy hectic missions. Another cutscene here with a bunch of bikers driving down. The place, not just place to call your own, but place that... Yeah, you know, that's the why people love playing these online games. Why why there is that massive difference between an online game and a, a, and a, a single player game is you want to be able to share, and and a place to call your own is also a place to invite your friends to. And I think that's where it starts to grow yeah. beyond that. It, it's the ability to share the things you've got, the things you've collected, the achievements you've had, tell stories, have fun. 
sandworm. accidentally bring up the console. <laughs> <laughs> a giant sandworm. Uh, this is the with the two zoom outs that they they had a, some type of bug or something. But sandworm is cool. There you go. Sandworms confirmed. Star Citizen. Yep. Apparently that's the thing. That's gonna everybody's the thing in what? most games. Apparently at the moment the sandworm is what everybody wants. That seems to be the hot thing right now. Yeah. But they are pretty cool. Let's, let's be fair. It's, it's pretty legit. So there's a lot of cool stuff coming out. This demo, though, really, really impressive. I mean, the, the planetary uh, generation system that they've got going on here is looking better and better. Uh, Gamescom blew me away with what they were showing. This was like, hey, there's that, but here's actually it's going to work with missions. Um, what, do you, what do you think about this? How did you feel about it? I mean, yeah. I'm always excited to see more content. I'm always excited to see... I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to see the planet engine evolve because for me... I just have a thing about planets, all right, and, and I have a thing about graphical fidelity, so that means a lot to me. But at the same time, I did, I was just slightly disappointed because I did hope for a bit more, like some Star Marine footage, for example, like a big versus game in one of the new levels, perhaps, uh, they, they, or, or even they've got a new level for Arena Commander coming, like a new Pirate Swarm or something. That's what I was hoping for, something a bit more solid. But it's still, yeah. it's exciting to see giving us more stuff to do, and then raising that player cap to allow us to do it with the community. Hopefully they let us actually host um, or take over a server for the community, though, when we start jumping into this. Because right now, yes, you know, trying to get more people game. together, it's pain. And we could easily fill 64 players on a, on a single instance. But I All right, guys. I think that's going to wrap us up. The, the, the upcoming stuff for Star Citizen looks really good. That demo looking beautiful. That CryEngine always looks good. Uh, any closing comments, Mr. Wasted? I'm just, fingers crossed, as you say, we hear about 2.6 in the next week so we can get our hands on it ASAP and head towards 3.0, which is what everyone really wants, I think. We're just biding time for 3.0. Yeah, I mean, get it out in October so we got two months to get uh, 3.0 come out because 3.0 is going to be the big one. That's when we start seeing the actual, like, here's the game mechanics that you will be playing with in Star Citizen. Trading, cargoing, piracy, the cargo system is going to open up so much of that, like, content no that's generated by players. Yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. All right, guys. Well, if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel for more sci-fi modding and gaming goodness. So, especially Star Citizen content. And we will see you in the next video. Later, everybody. Cheers, folks.